There are two different verb forms we use to talk about the past. One of them is called the preterite, one is called the perfect. This is true for English and German, so it helps us to look at the English first. Uh, but think about it this way, the meaning is very similar. I'm talking about something that happened in the past. Even though the meaning is similar, there are two very different verb forms. They both do the same job. Let's take a look. The preterite form is a one-word verb form, I ate. The perfect is a two-word verb form, I have eaten. You can say the same thing here, she wrote and she has written. We flew and we have flown. So we use these words all the time. All we're doing now is giving them a name, preterite, and perfect, and uh, drawing your attention to the fact that one of them is a one-word form and the other is a two-word form. So those are the preterite and the perfect forms in English. We have those same two forms, preterite and perfect, in German. You'll see how they're similar. In German, ich spielte Fußball. I played soccer. That's our first past tense, ich spielte. Our second one, ich habe Fußball gespielt. That's the perfect. Ich habe Fußball gespielt. So if we take a look at those up close, you notice that one letter T is the only difference between the present tense and the preterite. Ich spielte. That one letter T puts it from being now to being yesterday. The perfect, ich habe Fußball gespielt. Up front, ich habe, I have. And then the played goes to the end. So we got to watch the word order. It's going to be a little bit weird. Ich habe Fußball gespielt. Notice the verb at the end, the GE prefix, and the T at the end. Er trank den Saft. That's the preterite. Er hat den Saft getrunken. That's the perfect. This verb doesn't take any ending for the preterite, er trunk. There's no extra ending on there, no T, no E, no T-E, no E-N, nothing, no ending there. But we change the vowel. Okay, trinken is the infinitive with an I, er trinkt is the present tense, er trunk, the past. If we look at the perfect form, er hat den Saft getrunken. So up front we have a form of the verb to have, er hat, and then we pushed our verb all the way to the end of the sentence, getrunken. We see the GE prefix. And notice the vowel changed again to a U, getrunken. And we have an EN on the end of it. Er hat den Saft getrunken. Sie machte die Arbeit. Sie hat die Arbeit gemacht. Again, we're treating all of these as meaning the same thing. Uh, they're interchangeable in terms of the meaning of how you might use them if you were speaking or writing. So it's not a different meaning, it's just a different verb form. She did the work. Machte. Sie hat die Arbeit gemacht. She has done. All right, so this one again, notice the TE on the end. She, for a she form, you don't normally have an E there, but we will here. Sie machte die Arbeit. She did the work. Sie hat die Arbeit gemacht. Again, verb at the end with a GE prefix and a T up front, some form of the verb haben. Remember that the perfect verb form is actually made up of two separate words. I have eaten, she has driven, they have played. So you got two verbs. One of them will be at the end of the sentence in German. Remember, you got two verbs in a sentence. One of them will wind up at the very end of the sentence. So we're going to keep the other one up front. Uh, and the one up front we're going to call the auxiliary helping verb. The one at the end we call the past participle. That one usually begins with a GE in German. Now there's a few little exceptions along the way. The auxiliary helping verb at the beginning of the sentence. In English, it's always have. I have written, I have driven, I have eaten, I have slept. In German, it's going to be have about 75% of the time, but once in a while, we're going to use a different verb up front for the auxiliary helping verb. The verb at the end 
The past participle in German usually begins with a GE prefix. Usually. There are some exceptions. We're going to keep our eyes open for exceptions. And the past participle at the end of the sentence in German will usually end with either a T or an E end. One of those two endings, T or E N. So let's take a look at them up close. So we can look at the perfect form in English and in German. They're similar in that they both have an auxiliary helping verb and they both have a past participle. Uh, that part is the same. The difference, the German is going to put the par past participle at the end of the sentence. The English is going to put it up front. So we got an issue of word order here. Um, I have eaten the apple. I have the apple eaten. Ich habe den Apfel gegessen. So, got to get in some weird German funky word order. Uh, wir haben den Kuli gekauft. We have the pen bought. Again, your auxiliary helping verb is up front. Your past participle at the end. Uh, in English, the auxiliary helping verb is always a form of the verb have. I have. He has. I had, past tense, but in German, the auxiliary helping verb up front, most of the time it's haben, ich habe, du hast, er hat, some form of that, but we're going to see occasionally we're going to shake it up and switch it to a different verb, so watch out for that. Past participle at the end usually begins with a GE. Here's a whole set of them, gekauft, gestohlen, geholt. Past participle in German usually begins with a GE, but there are exceptions. And notice that these end either with a T or with an EN. So our past participles, we're going to be watching those. Here's the hint. If it is a regular verb, then it will end with a T. Regular verbs have a past participle that ends with the letter T. Irregular verbs have a past participle that ends with en. So if a verb is not regular, then the past participle will probably end with an en. Again, we have two different verb forms to talk about the past. We're going to treat them pretty much as if they mean the same thing. There are slight differences when you get into more literary topics, uh, and when we start looking at poetry and stuff like that, we'll care a little bit more about the difference. But basically, for right now, I ate and I have eaten, I drove and I have driven, we're going to treat those as being equal, meaning the same thing. All right, that's all for now. Goodbye, auf Wiedersehen, and tschüss.